Hello everyone, Max here with Fiction Rant with part one of a new series where I give my two cents on various shows and what I think are their highs and lows using my very own set of criteria. First, I'll give an overview of the show and tell you why I love it or don't love it as the case may be. I'll touch on watchability today, including how cringy the show may get, and finish with my recommendation on whether or not you as a new viewer should watch the show or in the case of things like Star Trek, which has multiple shows, I'll give you my recommendation on whether the show in question should be your first. If you've watched any of my other content, you'll be aware that I'm a huge fan of Star Trek, so it'll come as no surprise that the first show I'll review is Star Trek The Original Series. This is it, the show that started it all, which my dad and presumably many of your parents grew up watching. It's a space adventure show following the Starship Enterprise and her crew of fun and interesting characters, with the core trio being Captain James Kirk, his first officer Spock, and the ship's doctor Leonard McCoy. Together they confront would-be gods, space amoebas, invisible enemies, and warmongering Klingons, before ending most episodes by making fun of the rigidly logical Spock and laughing as the credits roll. I and many others love the show dearly because of the simple themes, campy acting and effects, and fun characters. It also came at a time when television was transitioning from happy-go-lucky shows like the Adam West Batman and Gilligan's Island to much darker and more grounded shows like Battlestar Galactica, where everyone dies in the first episode, and movies like Planet of the Apes, where it turns out everyone on Earth nerfed themselves into oblivion. I'd say that Star Trek stuck a good balance between the goofy comedies of the 60s and the perpetually dark shows of the 70s with its willingness to deal with some pretty dark content in its own way, including genocide and racism, while sporting a bright pastel set of colors and themes of doing the right thing even when it's hard, and strapping horns to small dogs to turn them into alien doggos. In particular, William Shatner's depiction of Captain Kirk was just absolutely phenomenal with his over-the-top way of putting pauses into monologues that became instantly memorable and eternally memeable. I also love the show for the way that it handled social commentary. Yes, it was often simplistic, but it still confronted important issues in a fun but fictional universe so they could get away with it. For example, the episode Let That Be Your Last Battlefield tackles the stupidity and ruinous concept of racism in perhaps the most on-the-nose way possible by having aliens who are split down the middle, black on one side and white on the other. But they're mirrors of each other. Black on the right side on one of them and white on the right side on the other. So of course they hate each other to the death and attempt to murder each other. Meanwhile, the crew of the Enterprise doesn't even notice the difference between the two aliens until it's pointed out to them. So their enmity towards one another is totally baffling to the crew. The two eventually learn that they're the last of their kind because the conflict between their two factions has caused them to wipe each other out and instead of realizing the folly of their fighting, they end the episode by still attempting to murder each other. It's heavy-handed and really obvious storytelling, but that's kind of the point. If you're a kid watching this, you can tell right away that both aliens are wrong to hate each other and should really try to get along. And that could be a good thing from time to time. Not all stories need to be super complicated. As for watchability, for a modern viewer who is accustomed to a certain standard of acting and effects, this one might be kind of difficult for you. The show has a low budget, so many of the aliens are made using shoeboxes, glitter, and paper mache, and the acting is often really over the top, especially the fight scenes. They're wonderfully ridiculous, so if that kind of thing is hard for you to watch, I'm sorry, but you're going to have a rough time. As for cringiness, every Trek series has its truly awful episodes, and the original series is no exception. The final season in particular had a couple massive duds. In particular, The Brain of Spock, which when asked about it, the actors involved said that they were actually embarrassed to be part of it. It was that bad. That said, for the most part, the episodes are perfectly fine, even when they're usually pretty simplistic. They're not generally just playing offensive to the senses, but they are, you know, they're old, and that's okay. So, the big question. If you're a brand new aspiring Trek fan and want to pick a first show, should it be the original series? In a word, no. Don't get me wrong. I love the show, but especially with the cinematic standards on display these days, it can be really hard to watch sometimes and harder to take seriously. I definitely recommend watching the show to anyone, but maybe not as your first taste of Star Trek. We wouldn't want you to get burnt out on your first show. There is a workaround, however. If you're a Trek fan and you're the parent of like a nine-year-old or something and want to turn them into a fan, go ahead and start with the original series before they can watch enough media to be picky about their special effects and acting standards. Get them before they realize that the silly bits are actually silly.
They're probably already watching things like Power Rangers or something, so Kirk dramatically dodging the glacially slow attacks of a rubber gorn won't bug them quite as much as an adult. So there you go. My take on the original series of Star Trek. I'm not going to give it a rating out of 10 on this or anything like that, because in terms of entertainment value, who cares? There's plenty of dumb movies out there that I will love forever because they're fun and they make me happy, so Metascore be damned. But what do you think? Are you a purist who believes that Trek should be watched in release order only? Chronological order, maybe? Is the brain of Spock the height of television mastery in your eyes? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, live long and prosper, and may the Force be with you.